This is a quick journey uh, through my tarot revision and an introduction. And because we don't have time with 22 images to go through the symbolism, unless we want a very long conversation, I thought more like a theater piece. Let me introduce the characters tonight. Because we're going to begin with the Magus. Now you might be seeing double, and I'm an old Gemini, so that feels quite natural. But it allows us also to experience the type of immersive sense of being with the archetypes. Meaning that they are characters with us in a play. And if we can think about it like that, then we're not believing in one or not believing in another. We're starting to see, almost like Shakespeare, that all the characters in the play, all the characters in Tarot Revisioned, are like keys of a piano. They each are a different note, a different quality, but when they are played together, they start to reveal to our imagination a story that when people say, be yourself, you could say, well, which one? Which quality, what character, if I am all these things? And the gift we are given is that once we understand the keys, once we understand that we are this quality, then we're able to use these images and ideas to enter into a conversation with our inner self, to ask questions that really only we can answer in the privacy of our own thoughts. And that's why today, let's look at the Magus. Now the Magus is in a lot of different traditions called the magician. But a magician wants to trick us. It's about the optical illusion, about sleight of hand. This is actually a different question. Because here we're going to enter the mysteries, and this is where the Magus, rather than the magician, is the initiator. He's the way shower into the arcana. And he asks one question. Are your questions to do with life or with fear? Because if they are with life, we will enter the story. But until you realize that you generate your own fear, these qualities will remain waiting. So we will enter into the, the Magus, and now we'll look at the High Priestess, and we can see how we begin with the Magus and then the High Priestess, and why? Well, the High Priestess is the entry into the mysteries, meaning into the dark, into the moon, into that which we cannot see, and we has, have to learn to trust. So she's going to take us, you see she's veiled, into the underworld into the journey, into the dark side of the moon where things can't be seen. But this is where much of the mystery of who and what we are is actually talked about as being part of ourselves now. And we moved into the Empress. She's going to be really the Great Mother. She's that which gives birth to all of us. We think of Sophia, Wisdom, the Mother. And so she's going to open the story. Now who is with the Mother, the Good Mother? The Good Father. And this is where we'll see the emperor, the good father. And he is actually born of uh, the empress, meaning that out of her fullness, he brings forth conditions. A bit like ourselves, we are born from life, and yet we are each unique. We each have a unique architecture, a unique structure. This is the knowledge of the emperor. Now this leads inevitably to the next question, the hierophant. Now the hierophant means a celebrant of the mysteries. And this is important because as a celebrant, it's to open up a story that through wonder and possibility reminds us that we are not one layer, but we are very layered and we have many qualities that demand different questions. So to navigate, we have to know what tools to use. And this leads us into the lovers. Now the lovers, of course, are about the union of lover and beloved of the mortal and the immortal, the divine and the terrestrial. And why this is important to us is it also becomes a way shore for our relationship with the questions we ask. This sense of, may we ask questions that lead us not more greatly into our fear of things, but actually into the possibility and the wonder of things, which leads to the chariot. Now the chariot will take us through the emotional state, it will be that which finally brings us into the relationship and rapport with our own deeper energies. And once we've done this, strength shows up and she's going to say, ah, what is strength? Is strength a sword? Is it to be against? No, it's the quality of finding a type of inner serenity, the ability to be in it, but not of it. And this will help us on our journey because remember the tarot unfolds like a book with more and more images that show us a more and more complete character of who we are.
because we're followed next by the hermit. The hermit will take us away from the civilized world and much more into the natural world because the hermit says, my goal is to draw forth your wisdom because many difficulties cannot be resolved one thing or another. So we have to find a way to resolve them in terms of a deeper generosity of spirit. And this is the hermit, which leads to the wheel of fortune. The wheel of fortune says, do you see, you are composed of these different levels. You are composed of the below, the in-between, and the above. And if you think of wheels within wheels, qualities within qualities, is we are learning how to handle and deal with our own energies, which leads us to justice. Now, justice sits as the 11th key. She is the middle of the tarot. She connects the above and the below. And why this is important is justice is also about musical equilibrium. Do you see how she's a dancer on top of the world? And she is holding not by force, but by grace. So justice is not blind in this. Justice is like a musical resolution. It allows us to realize the beauty of a phrase rather than simply relying on the facts. And this is important because it will lead us into the next question, which is the hanged man. Do you see he's upside down? And why is this important? Because it says that many of the things in the outer world that you look at, really you don't realize, but they're upside down. The values are upside down. So much of the mystery and question of who you are, the hanged man says, you must learn to trust your imagination. So as you enter into the conversation with the hanged man, you enter into the deep conversation with the collective imagination and begin to remember that you are a thing of wonder, not simply curiosity, difficulty, but you have, like music is to the notes, a greater story. You just don't hear it too often. And that's why, because we're afraid of death, and death is the 13th key. But a, a seed does not sprout lest it die. This is St. Paul. What does that mean? That we will die to one condition to draw forth another. The death is life, life, death, meaning the vitality and the willingness to go into the dark in order to bring forth the life. And this is why death is prerequisite to entering the mysteries. Lest we are willing to die to the old ways, we will not discover the new ones. But don't worry about it. Death says this is natural and not something to be preoccupied. So don't dwell on the frightening aspects of death. But think about transformation, how one energy cannot be destroyed, only transformed. And this leads us to temperance, because temperance isn't moderation. No, temperance is about alchemy, about the tempering of the steel, of the sword, to make it both strong and flexible. So temperance helps us understand the dark night of the soul. When we feel that there is no there there, when no matter what we want, it seems to be not there. And Temperance says, these journeys teach you how to find a greater resilience in yourself and to realize that you are not alone, but you must ask the questions. You must seek inner guidance. And Temperance will help us with inner guidance because the next being we encounter is the devil. Ah, the devil. The devil is in our collective, the thing that we fear so greatly. And yet the devil is the adversary in the tarot that says, I challenge you to build your reality upon truth, not lies. And if you believe in lies and believe that you can found your story upon lies, you will undo yourself. And I'll wait. That's why the horns, do you see? I'll wait until you are ready to enter through the gates because you have developed responsibility. Not waiting for others to do it but responsibility for yourself to actually say, I am where I begin, not they are where I begin. The devil says, yeah, bring it home because you're going to encounter the tower. And the tower is the lightning struck tower. It's the fall. It's the truth that in energy, oftentimes the tower is Mars. So it's about a fury, about a fire, about a quality that is the battle within the self. And as the self lies dying, realizing that like a tree, 
It's no one branch, no one quality, but finally we will understand how to navigate our own energies. And not that that changes the dynamic, but it changes our dynamic. And that creates then the journey into the moon. Now the moon is the lunar key. And she is the mystery of mysteries. And this is why she's also the path of dark power, of feminine gnosis. And the truth that you cannot achieve the knowledge of solar wisdom without journeying through the lunar realms. And this is the same thing as saying that unless you find within your body the capacity to anchor your own energies, you will always follow the flight of mind and never be present. So the moon demands we be present because we are followed by the sun. And the sun here quotes Leonardo's Vitruvian man, but it's not just one face here. It's a face looking at and a face looking up. It's not just the arms like this, it's the arms like this. And what this is trying to tell us is that the sun within us is actually a quality that can hold the inner illumination and yet not try to get off the cross of life and existence, but to actually share it. And therefore it's no longer a crucifixion, but a willingness to remain and engage in the stories and the trials and travails of this earth. Because the sun says, the true sun is nothing outside, but something deep inside. And another question that will come after you realize this is the question of judgment. The 20, 20th key, and this is Pluto, the planet Pluto. Think of the dark, that which cannot be known directly until after it passes. Or like the atomic bomb, once that was dropped, our consciousness could no longer go back to what it was like before that experience. And this is the question of judgment, of shin, of the life energy. And it strips us naked. It says there's no one to blame. There is no us and they. All is here. You as human are at the center of the wheel. That's why the tarot is a wheel. It even means wheel. Because it's saying you stand at the wheel now. And if you think of the wheel as a gyroscope, it will hold you. And that's why judgment says, I demand of you. The realization of who and what you are has nothing to do with the person you see in the mirror. And everything to do with how you cultivate your heart and what you allow to become relevant and meaningful within your experience of things. And this is why judgment leads then to the world, the world archetype. And this is the 21st key. And this is when we stand embodied as human. And we start to see that within ourselves is the macrocosm. We are the microcosm. That our history is written in our DNA. The knowledge of who and what we are as human didn't start with us, but actually we're woven of these things. And so the world asks, because this has to do with structure and Saturn and form, in the forms you create, are you allowing for the story from which you have emerged to be participant? Because if you are, the heavens will open up. The earth beneath your feet will remind you you are an ancient tree. There's nowhere to go except into a greater state of connection. And that's why the last friend that shows up, zero, is the fool. The fool walks upon the clouds. Around his center is the wheel. And what we see is the, the journey that finally says, joy is the font of being. Drink deeply, live vibrantly, be free. That's the wisdom of the tarot. That's the wisdom of the fool. And that's why my book, Tarot Revisioned, is truly a labor of love that took, well, only about 17 years. But who's bragging? I just had to spend time really giving myself to a relationship that said, only love only the willingness to enter can actually reveal who and what you are. And there might be a book inside of you. There might be stories you can't imagine. But it's up to you to ask the question. Tarot helps us, tarot revision in particular helps us, to ask these questions. So I hope you enjoy it. And please check out tarot revision. 
I think it will take you on an adventure you will find most remarkable and rewarding. Thank you.